I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. My name is Karina Olette, and I serve as the principal at Grand Star Elementary. With the unique challenges in this school year, we have put a strong emphasis on our social emotional needs of the students. We had the opportunity during our August professional development to look at what we already had in place and have continued to build on our current foundation. This year, when students arrive at school, they have a minimum of three adult contact points prior to the school day starting. Students are greeted in the car loop or when they get off the bus, during temperature checks, and then again by adults positioned in our hallway. This allows us the opportunity to have a positive interaction or pull students aside if they need additional support to transition from home to school. This is our second year at Grand Star to implement a morning meeting and incorporate social emotional curriculum of second step from preschool through fourth grade. The responsive classroom morning meeting is an engaging way to start the day. It helps to build a strong sense of community within the classroom through four components, greeting, sharing, group activity, and a morning message. In addition to our morning meeting, teachers are presenting their second step social emotional learning curriculum. This curriculum provides language and tools from perspective taking to calming down techniques. The units in each grade level all cover similar topics that build as students get older. The units include skills for learning, empathy, emotional management, and problem solving. Eyes are watching, ears are listening, voices quiet. Second Step developed a three-week community rebuild unit. There's a high pop-up to the second baseman at Shrek at second base, and he's able to make the catch for one out. Welcome to today, this afternoon, as the Trailblazers will be taking on the Shawnee West Vikings. Mitch Mock on the hill for the Trailblazers. Trailblazers come in undefeated at 4-0. We'll talk a lot more about some of the stats and some of the keys to the game here as, as we move along here in the first inning. And there's another pop-up. This time, Dyer going out. Center fielder hustling in. Wood, Wood's running hard, and he may be able to make the catch in center field. So Ty Wood's able to come in and make a running, good running catch. The catch, number seven. Catcher number seven, Duran, is at the plate. Here's the first pitch, Duran. And there's a shot to the right center, left center field. This one's going to get down and going to roll to the wall. As Ty Woods picks it up, gets the ball back into the infield as Duran checks into second base with the stand-up double. So the Vikings are coming out swinging the bat, being very aggressive at the plate. They know Mitch is going to be around the plate because that's what he does. He stays around the plate. He makes quality pitches. It's going to bring Adams, the first baseman, to the plate now. Left-handed hitting first baseman.
Man, Mitch strikes him off with a curveball for strike one. Mitch has an outstanding curveball. He's got a really very good command of it. He's got a really good fastball as well. And can seem to throw that curve anytime he wants to. It's the old one pitch to Adams. And he comes inside on the inside corner with a fastball. And Adams swings right through it for strike two. Oh, Mitch a hit in the count, no balls and two strikes. And he takes that one right down the middle as Adams gets caught looking for strike three. So at the end of one and at the end of a half inning, it's the Vikings nothing and the Trailblazers coming to bat. Food is life. It's the building blocks of our amazing bodies. Food is strength. It powers us in the pursuit of our full potential. Food is energy. It fuels our accomplishments, big and small. It nourishes us in mind, body, and spirit. Food is health, fitness, and our future. For freshness, selection, and low prices, Kansas City knows. Price Chopper. Welcome back to Blazer Field as the, we watch the Vikings take the field for the first time as the Trailblazers are ready to come up. Leading off with the Trailblazers will be the senior, Ty Wood, out in center field, followed by Jake McClure, batting second in left field. Dwyer, the shortstop, batting third, and if anybody gets on, Bowie will come to the plate. Good stiff breeze blowing out of the south here, so it behooves both pitchers to keep the ball low. The ball gets up in the breeze. Chances are it can leave the ballpark. On the hill for the Vikings, it's going to be young man named Morrow. Trailblazers come in at 4-0. One of the reasons why, it's Landon Turner last in the last game, he pitched five innings versus Olathe East. He gave up one run and two hits, struck out six and two walks. But the Trailblazers had a big fifth inning where they ended up scoring nine runs to win 11 to one over Olathe East. And another reason why they're undefeated right now still is Hayden Dyer, Dyer homeward in the last game. He went two for four, drove in two runs, and he's had him hitting at a very respectable average of 500. He's eight for 16. We'll talk a little bit more about Mitch here as he comes up to the plate here later on in this inning or in the next inning. Ty Woods, a switch hitter, coming up on the right side. Against the lefty Morrow. And the first pitch, swung on a miss by Wood. Strike one. And that ball is popped straight up and out of play. So, tie in the hole, no balls and two strikes. And that ball's going to be low in the dirt. This was able to lay off of that pitch. And he took a little bit off of that one, and that pitch is fouled away. I would have come in with a batting average of 354. And there's a shot to the so shortstop. Shortstop able to scoop it up, long throw to first base in time as Wood hustling down the line. Lippold able to come up with that. Hard hit ground ball to short to throw out Ty Wood. So one down, and here comes Jake McClure to the plate. Oh, 
Oh, McClure takes one right in the back, being hit by a pitch. So he'll take one for the team, and he'll go right to first place. It's going to bring up Caden Dyer. As I mentioned Dyer and Homer at the last game. Went two for four, drove in a couple runs, and hitting 816. So he's an extremely hot hitter for the Trail Blazers. And first pitch to Dyer is down and away for ball one. Clure at first base with a little lead. And Dyer calls timeout. Steps out of the box. Home plate umpire grants him that time. As Morrow seems to be paying a lot of attention to McClure over at first base. The Trailblazers will run on you. And pick pickoff play over to first. He's back in time. Trailblazers are hitting 354 as a team. Their own base percentage is, is 545, 41%. So they're able to get on base more than half the time. And swung on a miss by Dyer on a high fastball. Dyer could probably expect a spitty diet of fastballs as the pitcher tries to keep the runner close, tries to keep McClure close over at first base. Off-speed pitches to the advantage of the runner, so expect some high heat. And throws that one a little bit outside. Two balls and a strike to Dyer. Trailblazer shortstop. Pickoff move to first, and McClure is back at safety again. Comes the 2 1 pitch, ball's low and in the dirt. So it's 3 and 1 now as the count goes into Dyer's favor. We'll see if Coach Shrek has a hit and run, uh, has a play on 3 and 1 count. And here comes the pitch. And Dyer's able to hit one. The ball's long, gone, it's out of left field, and it is gone! As Dyer expecting the fastball, gets the fastball and drives it deep on the left center field wall for a two-run home run. As Dyer continues to swing the hot bat. McClure comes home, followed by Dyer. We had mentioned earlier, anybody gets that ball up in the breeze and it's going to travel. And that breeze is blowing stiffly out of the south. And Dyer able to get the ball up into the breeze and drive it over the left center field wall. So the Trailblazers jump out early 2-0 on the Vikings. It's going to bring Bowie to the plate. And Bowie takes a strike at the knees for strike one. I mentioned earlier the Trailblazers hitting 354 as a team. And that pitch is going to be low. Ball one. Dyer is red, Dyer is red hot. He homered Friday and he homered here again tonight. So no one on. And one down. And Bowie at the plate. And Bowie fouls one back to the screen. He's now down on the count. One ball and two strikes. Here comes the one-two pitch. And Bowie swings and misses. Strikes out. That is two down. As the second baseman. And Shrek comes to the plate. Ball 
Hawkins inside, left-hander against left-hander. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. And Shrek able to foul it straight back. Not quite able to square it up. Got up under it a little bit, knocked it straight back. Tyler Butash on deck. And that pitch is inside, curveball. That pitch was high and tight. And got Shrek's attention. He's ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. And he takes the strike on the outside corner. First strike two, two balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. It's the Trailblazers lead 2-0 on a two-run home run by Dyer. Here's a 2-2 pitch. And it's popped up. Pitcher's calling for it, catcher's calling for it, and the pitcher, Morrow, makes the catch as the wind was playing havoc with that. But the Trailblazers scored two in the first. Two nothing Trailblazers at the end of one. My job is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I'm having a big lunch and then just a snack for so dinner. So we're just using a speakerphone in this store. Is that a good idea? One of the ways I do that is to get them out of the home. If you're looking for a grout brush. This Garth, is did he ask for your help? No. 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 We all see it. We all see it. He has blue hair. OK. Blue. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Keep it coming. You don't know him. At Price Chopper, we know we're not the only grocery game in town. That's why we're always chopping prices. We're passing along the savings on our fresh cut meat. We're fueling your squad with affordable party trays and meals to go. And scoring you great low prices on all your game day favorites. For freshness, selection, and low prices, Kansas City knows Price Chopper. And welcome back to Blazer Field, where the Trailblazers currently lead 2-0 on a two-run home run by Dyer. And he's Hayden Dyer. He's able to drive one on the left center field wall, giving Mitch Mock a 2-0 lead here as we go into the top of the second inning. Mitch Mock on the hill. His last time out, he pitched a 5-0 shutout. Against Shawnee Mission Northwest. He's 3 0 on the season. As I mentioned earlier, he has an outstanding curveball and an effective fastball. Also, very good control. And I also did not mention the fact that he's hitting 400 when he comes to the plate to bat. So he leads the team with a stellar 0.0 ERA. And leading off for the Vikings will be the designated hitter, Lowe. And low swings away, drives one to center field, but Wood is back, got a beat on it, brings it in for one out, one pitch and one out. The Vikings continue to be very aggressive here at the first, uh, on first pitches. Lucas Dudek coming to plate. He's the left fielder. And Mitch able to jump ahead for strike one with a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Ball's going to be in the dirt. Ball one. Good crowd here tonight as Trailblazer family is showing up in. in in mass, as well as the Vikings nations is showing up in mass. So strike two at the knees on Dudek as Mark jumps out ahead. One ball and two strikes. Here in the top of the second inning, Trailblazers lead it two to nothing. 
And the curveball is fouled straight back. So Dudek able to fight that off. Jewel, the third baseman, is on deck for the Vikings. And that pitch is just outside. Here comes a 2-2 pitch. And ball's going to be high. Full count. Lucas is able to battle back. Now the count is even. Here comes a 3-2 pitch. And pops straight up. Off into foul territory as Bowie has a beat on it. And he's able to bring it in as he fights the win. So two down now for the Vikings. Now batting for the Vikings. The third baseman, number 14, Jacob Jewell. Jacob Jewell at the plate. And Jewell takes low for ball one. Trailblazers pitching as a whole. They got a 1.45 ERA. That's outstanding. They've only given up 10 runs the entire season. And Jewel takes high for ball two. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. And pitch is right there for strike one. As I mentioned, Mitch Mock is 3-0. Pitched a shutout the last time. And that ball's fouled straight back, so two balls and two strikes. You may be able to hear that wind. That wind is really blowing out of the south. And here's the 2-2 pitch. Pitch is in the dirt. Back to another full count. Hansel is on deck for the Vikings. The second baseman. Here comes the pitch. And there's a ground ball to short. Dyer scoops it up. Long throw across the diamond to Williams. And the side is retired. So after one and a half, it's the Trailblazers two. Vikings nothing. Back to Gardner Edison Field as the Trailblazers lead the Vikings from Shiny Mission West two to nothing. Starting it off with the Trailblazers will be Tyler Butash, the catcher. Butash comes in hitting 333. And first pitch is swung on a miss, strike one. Probably was able to get on the burrow in the first inning as Hayden Dwyer was able to hit a two-run home run with Jake McClure on. Ball's low for ball one. Tomorrow on the mound for the Vikings. Man, 
Butas swings right through that one. Strike two. Lights are on here at the stadium already. It's getting a little darker, a little cloudier, but no threat of rain until later on tonight. And foul straight back. Butash had a good swing at that one. Off the face, that face mask of the catcher who stands in there and takes it. One ball and two strikes. Here comes the pitch. And that one down the low. Butash takes that for a ball. Tyler's 14th, 15th plate appearance. He's at six official at bats. And he swings right through this one for strike three. So there's one away. That's going to bring up Dawson Williams, the first baseman. Dawson comes in hitting 500. And the curveball swings over it. Strike one. You got him. You got him. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. Pitch is high. Ball one. Trailblazers come in undefeated at 4-0. Ranked number two in the state of Kansas in 6A. Man. Fastball. Williams swings right through that one as well. Strike two. So Williams down in the count. One ball and two strikes. But just outside. Merle was looking, trying to paint that outside corner. Williams demonstrating a good eye. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. And that pitch is going to be strike three at the knees as he catches him looking. So that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Morrow as he's kind of settled down after giving up that two-run homer to, to Peyton Dyer in the first Mitch. inning. Here comes the pitcher designated hitter, Mitch Mock. As I mentioned earlier, Mock comes in hitting 400. And he swings strike one. Morrow's not afraid to challenge these trailblazer hitters. And that pitch is on the outside corner for strike two. Pitch is going to be in the dirt. Morrow struck out three so far. Swung on a miss as Morrow was able to strike out the side. So the Trailblazers go down swinging at the end of one and a half. It is the Trailblazers two. At the end of two and a half, it's the Trailblazers two. West nothing. Is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I got into this because I was a sufferer. I turned into my dad, but I came back. And I'm here to help others come back. This is my baby right here, Dr. Rick, on Becoming Your Parents. It came about where my parentology thoughts, I was coming up with so many of them, I thought, I don't need to just have this, the world should have it. So I just birthed it, you know, right out of me. Sometimes we have a victory and I, I relish those. Probably need a hacksaw at some point. No, no, nope. no. But most of the time we don't. General rule of thumb, we throw pillows. If there's nowhere to sit, you have too many. Parentology is not an officially recognized field yet, but I think um, we're making strides in that direction. You just have to keep reminding them, you are your own person. You're not your parents, you're you.
Hey, welcome back to Garden Entertainment Stadium. I'm Chuck Holmes. As you're watching the Trailblazers take on the Vikings from Shining Mission West. Let's get a chance here to go through our defensive lineup here real quick. Get a chance in between uh, batters. Mitch on the hill, pitching his coming up on his third inning. Swing and a miss, strike, foul back by Hansel, the second baseman. Mention coming into this game, the Trailblazers, 1.45 earned run average. Strike two, swinging. Mitch hasn't given up a run in almost in seven innings. And here comes the 0-2 pitch. Ball's low and away. Ball one. Henzo trying to get something started for the Vikings. And there's a ground ball to Dyer. It's short. Dyer backhands it. Long throw across the diamond in time. So Dyer able to retire the second baseman Hansel. Six threes. We look at the... Uh, Outfielders for the Trailblazers here. Out in left field will be Jake McClure. In center field is Ty Wood. And in right field, Landon Turner. Look at the infield. Take a look at that after the next batter here. Pitches inside for ball one. This is Casey, the right fielder for the Vikings. Correct. The number is 48. There's a ground ball. Williams. Williams scoops it up. Mark hustles over and able to make the play at first base. So good hustle by Mitch. Good hands by Williams. And Casey is retired. Let's run around the horn real quick as we look at the trail business defense. You got Austin Bowie over at third. Hayden Dyer is short. Carson Shrek at second base with Dawson Williams at first. Mitch Mock on the hill. And Tyler Butash behind the plate. It's going to be the pitcher to the to the plate. Morrow takes ball one. And that pitch is in the dirt as well. There's a hot shot to Bowie over third by Holmes, and he throws him out across the diamond. So Trailblazers flashing some leather here at the end of two and a half. It's the Trailblazers two, Vikings nothing. Bison have a unique response to storms. In the face of adversity, they turn together and run directly into the oncoming weather. They don't try to hide from it or sit idly by, waiting for it to pass. The herd addresses it, head on, together. Kansas is no stranger to challenges. Our state motto, to the stars through difficulties, lives beyond the state crest. It's emblazoned on our souls. It's the thread that connects the fabric of Kansas. We were made by hands that toiled in the unforgiving land, forged on the belief that freedom is our greatest calling. Kansas will be waiting. We'll be free to explore again. Until then, we'll make it through this the only way we know how, head on and together. And welcome back to Gardner Edgerton High School, where the Trailblazers are taking on the Vikings from Shining Mission West. They currently lead 2-0 on a two-run homer by Hayden Dyer in the first inning. Coming to the plate now will be Landon Turner. Turner's playing the right field. Lefty against lefty matchup. And Turner takes a weak swing at that pitch that was in the dirt, so for strike one. 
Turner pitched the last game against the uh, Olathe East. He was the winner in that game. And that pitches all the way back to the screen. Ball one. <laughs> Some of the fans are yelling, take one for the team. But that was cut at his head, so I don't think he wants to He don't let the team that much. Here comes the 1-1 one -one pitch. And he swings right through that one. For, gets a piece of it, but fouls into the catcher's gloves or strike two. So Morrow out ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes here in the bottom of the third inning. And Turner able to turn on one, hits one to right center field. It's going to get down. Center field able to cut it off to hold him to a single. But Landon Turner doing a good job of staying in there for the count. Back to the top of the lineup as Ty Wood is at the plate. Ty grounded out the shortstop the last time. Ty hitting 273 on the season. His big contribution is he's been hit by a pitch four times. And he swings right through this one for strike one. Turner over at first base gets his lead. Here comes the Paul just outside for one and one count. Morrow looking at the plate. Here comes the one one pitch. And Wood is able to get the hold of one. He flips the bat because he is out of here. As Ty Wood is able to get one up in the breeze. And he's able to hit a two-run home run. So the Trailblazers swinging their hot bat coming in with a batting average of 354. Continue to put the runs on the board. As Turner scores. And here comes Dyer to, uh, here comes Wood to score. So Trailblazers spanking the baseball this afternoon. Number seven, Jake McClure. That's going to bring Jake McClure to the plate. Jake was hit by a pitch his last time up and scored a hit of the Dyer. Dyer home run. He grounds out the first baseman this time on one pitch. So here comes Hayden Dyer, who homeworked the last time he was up. He got one up into the breeze and hit it to left center field. Dyer comes in red hot. He'd homered on Friday, and he's now nine for, for 17 for the season. Ball is high. Ball two. And ball three is... Morrow's being very careful with Dyer at the plate. The last inning, he struck out the side. But now that the big bats are coming up with the Trailblazers, they're being a little bit more cautious. And fouled away. 3-1 pitch as Dyer had the green light. Here comes a 3-1 pitch. And that's ball four as Dyer draws the walk. Here comes Austin Bowie to the plate. The third baseman, number 16, Austin Bowie. He's got three RBIs on the season, so you might see Dyer may take off here as he tries to get into scoring position. The left-handed pitcher on the mound. There he goes, and the ball is low and inside, and Dyer takes it standing up. So on 
Dyer's in scoring position with one down. Austin Bowie yet to play. Looking to at least get him over to third base. Here comes the pitch. And he swings through that one for strike one. Second shortstop trying to move in behind Dyer at second. Pitch is here low and away. Two balls, one strike. Second baseman. Shrek is on deck. Trying to shorten that lead that Dyer is getting. Here comes the pitch. And right up to the shortstop. Shortstop played him, had him played perfectly. But Bowie does his job, gets the runner over to third base. Two down now. Carson Shrek coming to the to the plate. Russell fouled out to the pitcher his first time up. West had, the, had him had Bowie played perfectly right up the middle. And Shrek able to line one to the third baseman. He was right on that one, but the third baseman had him played perfectly as well. So after two innings, it's the Trailblazers four. West nothing. On behalf of everyone in our community and in healthcare, thank you for doing your part. We appreciate your doing your part to keep us all safe. When in public, stay six feet away from others. Wash your hands often for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Wear a mask. Together, we are slowing the spread of this virus. And together, we are saving lives. What will do it? What will turn today's questions into tomorrow's answers that unlocks the mystery of rare childhood diseases? Love will, because love has no limits. And at Children's Mercy, Welcome back to Garden Edison High School. I'm Chuck Holmes. You're watching the Trailblazers on GEHS TV on MSTC Sports. We've got a lot of events coming up here later on. And we'll, we'll talk some, about some of those. We'll put them up on the screen here when we get a chance to. But busy, busy week here for the Trailblazer team, the Trailblazer Nation as soccer, softball, and uh, more vo boys varsity baseball will be taking over for the rest of the week here as we get into the meat part of the season. Mitch Mock on the hill. Currently pitching a 4-0 shutout. And first pitch is a curveball as Lippo takes the curve for strike one. Ball high. You know, not only the Trailblazers are getting great pitching, their defense has been outstanding this year. They've only committed two errors the entire season so far. And there's a ground ball. The buoy deep between the hole as Lippo is able to find a gap between second and short. So they have a runner at first base. Nobody out. Catcher Duran at the plate. Drill Blazers have turned three double plays so far this season as well. And first pitch is a strike. Nine seventy-five fielding percentage for this team, so they don't hurt themselves on the defensive side. Ball's in the dirt, and Butash does a good job of stopping that one. There's a few little raindrops start to fall here a little bit. Swung on and missed as Mock is able to take something off of that pitch. So one ball and two strikes to the catcher, Duran. Runner at first base, lip hold. And throw over. 
dives back in safely. And the pitch curveball just, just gets a piece of it as he's able to foul it off the left, left field line. That pitch is popped up as Bowie's calling for it. Able to make the catch. To retire Duran. Now I think West, the first baseman, number 15, Matt Adams. We'll see that pitch as he's able to. Uh, Mark is able to pitch sequence for Mark. Does a good job of setting up the hitter. Gets him off, hits one foul, and then Teases him and hits one straight up. So, ball one to Adams. Adams struck out looking the last time. Runner at first base for West is lip hold. He singled. Curveball's going to be inside. Two balls and no strikes. Low the DH is on deck. And Mitch is able to come in with a fastball for strike one. We pulled over first with a short lead. There's a pitch. And he runs. Here comes the throw. Butash guns him down. Butash able to throw the runner Lipold out as he tries to steal second base. That's one. That is one of the things that Tyler Butash has done so well this season is to gun down runners. He throws out people like a bouncer at a club. And that ball is hit well to center field. Wood going back, back, and it is out of here. So the runner being picked off is a big play for the Trailblazers, but Adams is able to, to get one and drive it out, and Tyler Wood ran into the fence out there, and he is very, very, very slow getting up. That is the first run that Mitch Mock has given up this season. As we see here, as Adams is able to put a charge in that one. Wood going back and back and hits the fence. He hits, kind of hits the, the post in the fence, so he really runs into it hard as he gave it a valiant effort to try to bring that ball in. So Vikings are on the board after a home run by Adams. First runs given up by Mitch Mock this season. I mentioned earlier that if you get the ball up in the breeze, it will carry. And the Trailblazers have done it twice. Now the Vikings do it. Now the infield comes in as they pump up their pitcher, Mitch Mock. But that, steal, that stolen base, uh, the runner being thrown out trying to steal second base turns out to be a really big play as instead of a two-run home run, it's just a single-run home run. The designated hitter, number nine, Mitch Love. Those are the kind of you're the coach, you're like, oh, man, one more pitch. <laughs> so the designated hitter comes up low. Low flat out to center field his first time. Keep it down low. Low for ball one. Dudek, the left fielder, is on deck for the Vikings. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. Man, that pitch is a little high. Dudek ahead. No balls and two strikes. 
designated hitter for the Vikings. Here comes a 2-0 pitch. And that ball is hit left center field. It's going to drop in for a base hit. So now the Vikings have another runner at first base. Still just one out. Now batting for the Vikings. Left fielder, number 11, Lucas Dudek. Lucas Dudek back at the plate. Roll to first base because base is low, is able to get back safely. Dudek flat out to the third baseman his last time up. Butash once again with a very good stop on the ball that's in the dirt. So one ball in, no strikes. Two outs here. Ball's fouled back. Two balls and a strike as Mitch tries to work himself out of this inning. Ball low. Nice. Three balls and one strike. Runner at first base. For the Vikings, is low. Low with a little bit of a lead over. And takes a strike. Full count here. Three balls and two strikes. The runner at first base will be off with the pitch. And here comes the pitch. And the ball's hit. High fly ball. And that ball is going to be out of here as well as he's able to get it up in the breeze as Dudek is able to turn on one and hit one to left field. So now all of a sudden, the Vikings are back in this ball game as Mitch has given up two home runs in this inning. Dudek, the left fielder, able to turn on one and drive it out of the ballpark on a 3-2 pitch. So now the Trailblazers lead it 4-3. That's caught, that's still, that runner caught stealing. It's still a big play. That's going to bring up the third baseman, Jewel. As the Trailblazers have a new pitcher up pitching it, uh, warming up in the bullpen. It's number 32. And ball one to Jewel. And the pitch is popped up. Mitch calling for it. And he's able to make the catch to get himself out of the inning. But the Vikings strike three times on two home runs here in the top of the fourth inning. And at the end of four, it's the Trailblazers four and the Vikings three. On behalf of everyone in our community and in healthcare. Thank you for doing your part. We appreciate your doing your part to keep us all safe. When in public, stay six feet away from others. Wash your hands often for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Wear a mask. Together, we are slowing the spread of this virus. And together, we are saving lives. We're at the movies and we need to silence our phone. Who knows where that button is? I don't have silent. Everyone does, right up here. It happens to all of us. We buy a new home and we turn into our parents. What I do is help new homeowners overcome this. Was oh, that an adjustable spanner? Good choice, Steve. Okay, don't forget, you're not assisting him. You hired him. You have nowhere to sit. You have too many. Who else reads books about submarines? My dad. Yeah. Oh, those are... Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Look at that. And welcome back to Grand Edison High School with the Trailblazers lead now 4-3 to three after a big three-run fourth inning for the for the West Vikings. Earlier we talked about, about the keys to the game here. 
Our first key was for the, the Trailblazer bats to stay hot. And so far, they've had two home runs that have given them two two-run home runs. They come in batting at 354 team average. Uh, no, no reason not to trust their bats because they're definitely using, they're, they're doing that. Um, and uh, one of the other keys is pitching. Pitching kind of failed in the last inning. But Tyler Butash was able to throw a runner out trying to steal second base, which preserves that one-run lead for the Trailblazers. Butash leading it off for the Trailblazers, and he swings and fouls one back. So one ball and one strike. Butash hits one up in the left field. The ball's coming in. It's being knocked down by the wind. And left fielder Dudek is able to come in and take care of that one. So one away. Now back for the Trailblazers. The first baseman, number 21, Dawson Williams. Dawson Williams comes to the plate now. He struck out looking the last time. Going away for ball one. And this ball has popped straight back. One ball and one strike. Swing and a miss by Williams. And Williams gets caught looking again for two outs. That's the second time he's been caught looking. A strikeout number five for Morrow. It's Mock at the plate, who was caught looking his last time up. Morrow's done a good job. He's only given up four hits, but two of those hits have been home runs. Trailblazers lead four to three here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One and one on Mitch. And here's the pitch. Fouled off as he jams him. It fouls that one straight back as well. And the race is on. <laughs> Boys have a little bit of fun on the foul balls as he can get there first. And Mitch fouls that one straight back, and here comes another one. <laughs> I tell you, these kids have fun on the baseball field. That's the way it should be. Here comes the 2 1 pitch as Mitch takes it outside. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah. Turner's on deck. He's the one racing over. <laughs> Here comes the 2-2 pitch. And Mitch swings and misses for strike three. So, Morrow has settled down. Trailblazers lead 4-3 at the end of four. Lieutenant Adam Winters, the Kansas Highway Patrol. The Kansas Highway Patrol public resource officers across the great state of Kansas have a message for you. Three out of every four car seats are installed incorrectly. Please read your owner's manual and vehicle manual to learn how to install your car seat correctly. When driving on Kansas highways and you see a trooper in a safety vest and you see the orange cones, you're in a construction zone. Please remember, slow down, don't drive distracted, and move over, it's Kansas law. Now that you've seen us, 
Make sure you see us and all other first responders and road workers. Move over. And yeah, welcome back to Gardner Edison High School. We have a new pitcher on the hill for the Trailblazers. Number 32, Zach Sanford is now pitching. Right-handed pitcher and first baseman. Junior here at Gardner Edison High School. Been quite an, if you get the ball up in the breeze, been quite an offensive fest as the Vikings were able to get on the board in the last inning. Two, two home runs in that inning. One two-run homer and one single home run. Trailblazers have four runs. They've hit two two two-run home runs. So both pitchers have fallen victim to the to the high winds here today. Leading off the top of the fifth. For the Vikings. The second baseman, number three, Dave Hansel. Dave Hansel. Leading off for the Vikings here in the top of the fifth inning. He grounded off the shortstop his last time up. And he takes strike one. Sanford, another tall, lanky right-hander. Much fouled away. Much in the same build as Mitch Mock is. And there's a ground ball up the middle as Dyer over to get it up and throw to first base in time. So once again, Hansel grounds out 6-3 for one away, and that's going to bring up the right fielder, Casey. Next up to the Vikings, the right fielder, number 48, Andrew Casey. Mitch Mott gave up three runs on five hits in his time in his four innings of work. We talked about the Trailblazers not, not hurting themselves with errors. They've only committed two errors the entire season. There's foul off to the left side. Only committing two errors. That, that helps you out a lot with your earned run average. However, the Trailblazers have also walked 16 so far this year. So not a very good strikeout to walk ratio for the team as they only have 20 strikeouts. Mitch struck out one, didn't walk anyone. And that ball's hit the left center field on a rope. And it's going to get all the way down. It's going to roll to the wall. Uh, McClure able to get it up, get the ball back into the infield. So the Vikings have a runner down in scoring position with one out as they trail four to three with Holmes coming to the plate. Leadoff hitter. Center fielder, number one, Josh Holmes. Holmes is flat out to the second baseman. And he was thrown out by Bowie. His last at bat. Here's the pitch. And he takes the strike for strike one. Sanford looks like he's got a pretty good fastball as well. Shrek trying to keep the, keep the runner close over at second base. As closer towards the middle, here comes the, the pitch. Ball's outside. Two balls and a strike on Holmes. That ball's fouled back. Two balls and two strikes on Holmes, who's 0 for 2 today. Lip holds on deck. Shortstop for the Vikings. 
looking in for the 2 2 sign. Here's the pitch. And we're going to have a step off the mound. As Casey's dancing around back there. And that ball's going to be just fouled on the line. As Sanford was able to jam him on that pitch, and all Holmes could do was just foul it off, hit him right on the hands with it. Holmes looking to at least get the runner over to third place, if not drive him in. And the pickoff play, and Casey back easily. That's just a toss to kind of let him know that I know you're out there. I don't expect Casey to try to steal third base. He's at second base with one out. He's in a scoring position already. And here comes the pitch. Falls in the dirt. Gets by Butash. And Casey's able to go to third base anyway. So on a wild pitch. So now what Stanford wants to do is Concentrate on the hitter, a 3-2 count. Here comes the pitch. And that ball's inside, so now they have runners at first and third. With one out. Trail Blazers have turned three double plays this year. Looking for one right now. The shortstop, number four, Drew Lippo. You'll expect the Vikings to have some type of play on and maybe draw a throw to third base to try to score the runner from, draw a throw to first base. And swung on and missed by Lippold. He singled his last time up but was gunned down by Butash as he tried to steal second base. And that ball's fouled back, so now... Sanford is out ahead. New ball and two strikes. Williams holding the runner on at first base. So there's a big hole between first and second. Dyer playing closer up the middle. Bowie's in at third. And the pitch. Did he go? He didn't ask for an appeal, so the ball's high. Ball one, and you see Casey over at third base, a tying run. Moves over at first base, timeout. Leopold steps out the box. One ball and two strikes. As Sanford needs a big out here if he can get it. Here comes a one-two pitch, curveball. He just kind of just pokes it out there to center field. It's going to be plenty deep enough to drive the runner home, and Wood makes the call. And Casey comes in to score, and the ball game is tied up on a sacrifice fly by Lippold. Now batting for Sean Mission West, the catcher, number seven, Dakota Duran. Rand coming to the plate now. Home stays at first base on that fly ball to center field. First pitch is the ball. Man, that pitch is right in there for a strike. One and one's the count. Catcher Duran. Holmes getting a bigger lead over at first base. Here comes one one. Takes a little bit off of that one. Two balls and a strike.
Holmes leads a little bit bigger. And the throw over. Two balls, one strike, two outs here in the fifth inning, a 4-4 baseball game. And the pitch, there goes Holmes, and that ball is popped up. It's going to be a long run for everybody. And Holmes, Williams is able to, able to make the outstanding catch over the shoulder. So after four and a half, we're all tied up here at Gardner Edgerton. Four to four. Back to Gordon Edgerton High School where we are in the bottom of the fifth inning with the Trailblazers and the Vikings are all tied up four to four as the Vikings were able to push one across here in the first inning. We, we take a look at Coach Corey Schreck, head coach of the Trailblazers. He's put together a pretty good team. They're ranked number two here in the state. And now he's trying to see if his offense can get cranked up again as Morrow, who's on the hill, has done a really good job. He's only walked one. He struck out six. And he's, and he's hit one. So he's done a really good job of keeping his team in the game until they can get their bats going. Landon Turner coming to the plate. Turner singled and scored on Woods. Two-run home run back in the third. And Turner takes strike one. Here comes the old one pitch. And Turner shortens up, pulls the bat back, takes the ball. Turner with all kind of speed, as we saw in the, other, in the last half inning, where he's chasing down foul balls behind the plate here with one of the guys over from Northwest, from West. And that pitch is, hits him as it gets a piece of his jersey. So he gets hit by the pitch, and he'll take first base. Now back to the Blazers, the center fielder, number one, Ty Wood. Ty Wood coming to the plate. He homered his last time. Rounded off the short the first time, but he was able to hit a two-run home run, get it up in that breeze, and hit over the left field. And he, when he hit it, he knew he got it all. So now we had that exact same situation. Ty Wood at the plate. Turner on first base. Morrow on the hill in a tie ball game, bottom of the fifth inning. Here can throw over to first base. Turner's back. Everyone here knows Turner can run. McClure on deck. And the pitch. The outside, strike one. Wood doesn't like the call. Morrow able to grab the outside corner on that pitch. Here comes the pitch. Ball's in the dirt, and Turner's going to go all the way to second base, standing up. As Morrow buries, buries one in the dirt. It's going to be a wild pitch. So now Turner's in scoring position. 
for Wood. Wood looking to at least advance him over to third base. Here comes a 2-0 pitch, and he swings through it. There's one ball in, two strikes. And Wood swings at a bad pitch, mad at himself. Strikes out on a pitch that was low and away from him. Jake McClure to plate. He grounded out to the first baseman this last time. He's also scored a run. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning. And he takes the strike. McClure scored on Dyer's two-run home run back in the first. Jake hoping to find a hole somewhere to see if he can bring Turner in. Comes to the 0-1 pitch. Pitch is on the inside. 1-1. One, one. Jake McClure came into this game hitting 385, so he's got some pop in his bat too. And there's a Slow roll to the second baseman. Able to scoop it up. Jake hustling down the line. He's thrown out at first, but Turner moves over to third base. But they're now two outs. Hayden Dyer coming to the plate. Uh, they're going to intentionally walk Dyer. They don't want to pitch to him. They'd rather pitch to Austin Bowie. For the place. For the number 16, Austin Bowie. Not a bad move by the coach from West. The breeze is still blowing out. Dyer's already burned him once with a two-run home run, so take the bet out of his hand and automatically put him on first base. Now Bowie has to try to pick him up. He struck out once today and grounded off the short. Back, and they're going to get, oh, they had him over first base. Good pickoff move. Picks Dyer off. And that ball's fisted, and it's going to be caught by the catcher. So, Joe Business is retired here in the fifth inning. We're 4 4 after five. Higher education, Johnson County Community College delivers more for your money. More opportunities to learn outside the classroom, more interaction with caring instructors, more personalized attention with supportive student services. Discover more at JCCC. Change your life through learning. Change your life at Johnson County Community College. Call 913-469-3803 or visit jccc.edu to learn more. And welcome back to Grand Edgerton High School, where we are currently tied up 5-5. I'm sorry, 4-4 here going into the bottom of the sixth inning as we look at Zach Sanford on the hill for the Trailblazers. He came on in relief of Mitch Mock, who gave up three runs on five hits. Zach out there for a second inning of work after giving up the tying run in the last inning. Walked one batter so far, giving up a sacrifice. He also gave up a double. So, Coach Shrek hoping he can stabilize his pitching staff, stabilize this this, uh, this pitching performance until the Trailblazers can get up, and get to bat again. So, four four here in the six, and we're going to start off with the first baseman. 
Instead of Matt Adams. Matt Homer his last time up. Struck out once and Homer once. He homered right after Casey. Was trying to steal second base and gunned down by Butash. At that time, preserving a 4-3 lead for the Trailblazers. Counts one and one here. Curveball. Nice big breaking curveball from, from Zach as he breaks that out in his arsenal. One ball and two strikes. Shakes off the sign. And Adams calls timeout as Zach was able to shake off a couple of signs. He and Butash runs out to the plate, to, runs out to the, to the hill. Say a couple of words to Zach, get their signal straight. Comes one ball, two strike pitch. Once again, breaks the curveball off into dirt. Two and two on first baseman for the Vikings, Matt Adams. Here comes a two-two. And he takes strike three at the knees. So Zach Sanford gets his first strikeout. Very nice pitch at the knees. Now then, for Sean West, the designated hitter, number nine, Mitch Love. Adams caught looking for the second time in between home runs. Here's Lowe, the designated hitter. He singled his last time up. There's a slow roll to short as Carson comes in, throws him out at first base. So Carson tracked with a very good play. Now that the Vikings. <laughs> Number 11, Lucas Duda. Duda coming to the plate. He homered this last time up. And a full pitch count and was able to get one up into the breeze in left field. And he takes strike one. Tudek doesn't look like he has that kind of power, but he was able to drive one out of here. Curveball. Swung on and misses. Stanford seems to be Stanford seems to be getting into his groove. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. And ground ball up the middle, takes a big hop off the mound. Dyer comes in and throws the first and gets him. So at the end of five and a half, it is tied up four to four. My job is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I got into this because I was a sufferer. I turned into my dad, but I came back, and I'm here to help others come back. This is my baby right here, Dr. Rick. I'm becoming your parents. It came about where my parentology thoughts, I was coming up with so many of them, I thought, I don't need to just have this, the world should have it. So I just birthed it you know, right out of me. Sometimes we have a victory and I, I relish those. Probably need a hacksaw at some point. No, no, no. But most of the time we don't. General rule of thumb, we throw pillows. If there's nowhere to sit, you have too many. Parentology is not an officially recognized field yet, but I think um, we're making strides in that direction. You, you just have to keep them. reminding them, you are your own person. You're not your parents. You're you. Welcome back to Garner Edgerton as Carson Shrek leaves it off for the Trailblazers in a 5 5 ball game, a 4 4 ball game here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 
Morrow on the hill for the Vikings. He's gone all the way. And one and one is Morrow struck out seven today. Walk two, one intentionally. Shrek takes ball low, two balls and a strike. Shrek's 0 for 2 today, flat out to the pitcher and flat out to the third baseman. And that pitch is fouled away. Two balls and two strikes. Tyler Butash on deck. And that pitch is fouled away as well. It's Carson battling to stay alive at the plate. Trying to get on base. And there's a ground ball. And it's going to be and not now by the first baseman, but didn't go far away, so he's able to pick it up and step on the bag for one out. Now back to Garbage, the catcher, number nine. Tyler. We have a lot more action coming up here on GEHS TV on MSTC Sports. This coming Thursday, you get varsity softball as the Trailblazers women will take on Olathe North. They'll be on live stream number two here on the GEHS TV network. Also on Thursday, there's varsity baseball as the Trailblazers will take on Shiny Mission East. And they will be on live stream number one on GEHS TV. Takes the pitch inside. Two balls on Butash, and on Friday, varsity soccer, as the Trailblazers will play, take on Shiny Mission Northwest. They will be on live stream number three on GEHS TV. So a lot of action coming up here this week. Find a team that you want to follow on either live stream one, two, or three. Tune in for all the action. And three and one on Butash. Utah is struck out and flat out to left field. And he takes ball four. Trailblazers have a run at first base. The potential lead run over at first base, which will bring up Dawson Williams, who struck out looking twice. So Dawson is overdue. See Duran out talking tomorrow on the, the, working on how they're gonna pitch Dawson and now keep an eye on Butash at the same first. time. Number 21, Dawson Williams. What Dawson wants to stay away from. He wants to stay away from the double play if he can. Butash ah, draws a throw. Williams, big, strong kid. If he can get one up in the breeze, he can put the Trailblazers out ahead. Ball's in the dirt. Duran doing a good job of keeping that ball in front of him to keep Butash at first base. That ball is turned on, driven foul on the left field line. Dangerous. Really don't expect Butash to run, being the catcher. A little bit more average catcher speed, but he is the, the lead run. And Williams does have the capability of driving him in or even over to third base on a single. And there goes Butash, and they got him picked off. 
And the throw is he's going to be out. As Butash takes off and Morrow able to pick him off at first base. So and now two outs. Butash is caught stealing. Here comes Dawson Williams on a 1 1 count with two outs now. No one on. And he fouls that one away. Barely getting a piece of it. Now he's down in the count. One ball in, two strikes. Mitch Mock on deck. Here comes a 1 2 pitch for Morrow. And Williams swings and misses. Strikes out for the third time. So at the end of six, we're all tied up 4-4. Four, four. My job is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I'm having a big lunch and then just a snack for so dinner. So we're just using a speakerphone in this store. Is that a good idea? One of the ways I do that is to get them out of the home. You're looking for a grout brush. This Garth, is did he ask for your help? No. 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 We all see it. We all see it. He has blue hair. OK. Blue. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but Keep we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Keep it coming. You don't know him. And welcome back to Gardner Edison Stadium. I'm Chuck Holmes here with GHS TV on MSTC Sports. And we've seen a pretty good ball game here today. Both teams were tied up 4-4. Here's our upcoming schedule. As I mentioned earlier, we have softball coming up on Thursday, which will be on live stream number two as the women take on Olathe North. Baseball again on GHS TV on live stream number one. And then girls soccer on live stream number three on Friday. So lots of action coming up this week on GEHS TV for the Trailblazer Nation. Zach Sanford out for his third inning of work. The third baseman, Jewel, will be third leading baseman, it off. Number 14, Jacob Jewel. Jacob Jewel is grounded out to short. And flat out to the pitcher. And he takes low for ball one. So you hear a very vocal Vikings crowd here as they're trying to rally their team to score at least one run, maybe more. Here comes the 1-0. Curveball hit the Dyer short. Dyer scoops it up, throw on first base, and one away. Hansel coming to the plate now. Hansel's grounded out twice. Twice to Dyer over, over it short. He's 0 for 2. And he takes first pitch high for ball one. Casey, the right fielder on deck. And that ball is hit foul on the left field line. Activity in the uh, Trailblazers bullpen. That's number eight, Brady LeCluse is warming up. Curveball. Strike two, swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes to Hanzo. 4-4 game here in the top of the seventh. And the pitch, just outside. Two and two. Here comes the pitch from Zach. Well, oh, that pitch had to be just a little high because Lutash wanted that strike. We now have a full count here on Hansel. Three balls and two strikes. And 
Yeah, here's a 3-2 pitch. And that ball's going to be grounded to Dyer again. Scoops it up. Long throw. Got him. So Dyer retires Hensel for the third time today. Now under two outs. Going to bring up the right fielder, Casey, who doubled his last time. He doubled and scored. On Sacrifice fly drove him in from Lipho when he was at third base. And Casey takes a strike. If you're Zach Sanford, this, this is the guy you want. You don't want to go back to the top of the order. Here comes the 1-0 pitch, 0-1 pitch. Curveball took a little bit off of that one. Great idea. 1-1. One Again, a little bit more off of that one as well. That one falls up a little shorter in the dirt, so two balls and a strike. Holmes on deck for the Vikings, hoping to get a shot here in this seventh inning. Ball high, 3-1. I mentioned Casey doubled his last time up. So he's got some pop in his bat as well. So Zach wants to get him here if he can. Nice. And yeah. that pitch is in there. Nice. Full count. Hey, and that's the one thing as a hitter that you don't do is you don't show up the umpire. Two balls and two strikes. Anything close now. Got him. And there's going to be a slow roller to first base. William scoops it up. Steps on first. And a little bit of collision over there, but he's able to get the out. Trailblazers come up in the bottom of the seventh trying to win it. They score a tie, 4-4. At Price Chopper, we know we're not the only grocery game in town. That's why we're always chopping prices. We're passing along the savings on our fresh cut meat. We're fueling your squad with affordable party trays and meals to go. And scoring you great low prices on all your game day favorites. For freshness, selection, and low prices, Kansas City knows Price Chopper. At Children's Mercy, we know that trust is everything. And you can trust that we will do whatever it takes to protect the health and safety of your child. Especially now. So we put our plan into action, implementing safety measures at every step of the way. Whether it's technology that allows you to see your doctor from home. We're carefully planning out every visit so you'll know what to expect. Because we want you and your child to feel safe at our home too. And here we are, coming to the bottom of the seventh inning with the Trailblazers just needing one run to end this game. It's Mora on the hill for the Vikings. He's pitched a very good game. He's given up two two-run home runs, but that's it pretty much. He struck out seven, and he's hit one. He's only walked two, and he's going to go all the way, it looks like. Actually, he's walked three. So Mitch Mock is up at the plate. Mitch has struck out twice. Takes ball one. It's the third time through for Mock, so he's, he's seen this guy three times. Balls inside. And we all know Mitch has the power to end it in one swing with this breeze blowing. Won't take much. And that pitch is outside for ball three. Landon Turner's on deck. And Mitch takes it right down the middle. He's taking all the way on that one. Hitters count here. Three balls, one strike. Marl trying to keep Mitch off base. And that pitch is outside. It's which is able to take the walk. Now about it. <laughs> A 
coach, Todd Reed, walks out to the mound and takes the ball from his, his starter, Ethan Morrow, who pitched a very good ball game today. And then Brandon Stone, Pitching change for the sophomore. Players. Now taking the mound, number 16, Brandon Stone. He's a right hander. So while well, we've got a little bit of time here in between pitches, here is actually it's four to four. We talked about the Trailblazers hitting as a team at coming in at 345 batting average, and this young sophomore on the hill. About to pitch for the Vikings. Looks like he's got some pretty good stuff. So we will see. 4-4 here in the seventh inning. Trailblazers just need one run to, to end the game. Breeze has continued to blow. Rained a little bit earlier, but it stopped. Breeze is still picked up, though. Landon Turner will be the first one to face this young man. Final warm up pitches for Stone. We got a courtesy runner at first base for Mitch Mock. Here in high school baseball, we only play seven innings. We just need one run here to end this game. Logan Grow over at first place is the, is the pitch runner for Mitch. Grow has a tremendous amount of speed. You might expect the Trailblazers to maybe try to steal a base here. See if they can't get him in. Scoring position, got a left-handed hitter up at the plate. It's going to be a big hole over on the right side of the infield. The advantage of a left-handed hitter is kind of blocks the view of the catcher a little bit. Somebody's trying to run from first base. So Landon turns up at the plate. Landon's been hit by a pitch and singled earlier. Short lead over first. You may look for. Coach Streck to also try to butt the runner into scoring position. Runner at first base, nobody out. One ball. Grow with a short lead over at first. And Turner squares up the butt, pulls the bat back, takes high for ball two. in Turner's favor. Two balls, no strikes. Run at first base is Grow. Once again, a short lead over first. He draws the throw, dives back in safely. So Stone is definitely thinking about trying to keep him over at first base. Two balls, no strikes. Tied up 4-4 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And it gets the bunt down. Turner does a good job. He may beat this up. And Turner is safe. Turner does a good job of hustling down the line to beat the throw. Jewel unable to make the play. Now the Trailblazers have runners at first and second with nobody out. And that's going to take us to the top of the order as Ty Wood comes up. Ty's only homer once, coming up on the left side of the plate this time. Homer from the right side back in the third inning. Two run home run. As he was able to bring in Turner, who was at first base at the time. So now the Trailblazers have the winning run at second base. Nobody out here in a 4 4 game. And Wood squares up the button, fouls one straight back. Fouled. He struck out the last time. McClure is on deck. Just 
Jones takes a single from Wood. No balls, one strike. Grows out at second base. He's a winning run. And there's another bunt. It's going to be foul. So now Wood's in the hole. No ball and two strikes as Coach Strack is playing small ball, trying to advance both of the runners, get them both in the scoring position. And McClure and Dyer coming up. And that ball's in the dirt. And Durant does a good job of keeping it in front of him, keeping Grow at second base. One ball and two strikes now. Big situation for Stone, the pitcher on the mound, a young sophomore. Here's the pitch. And that ball hits him. Oh, they're going to say strike three. Umpire's going to call him out. He's going to say that Wood stuck his hand out there. Now, Matt, for the Trailblazers. Coach the coming out the first Number base. Seven. Here we see it here as, oh, as, as we see Wood stick his elbow out there to take one. So he actually stuck his elbow out and caused himself to be hit. Some discussion going on with Coach Shrek now. So now there's one out. Jake McClure at the plate. Jake looking to end it here with a single. And he takes strike one. Jacob's hit by a pitch. Flat out to the first baseman and grounded out to second. He's also scored a run today. And the pitch. Curveball. Breaks a little low. That pitch on the inside part of the plate. <laughs> Dyer to shortstop is on, on deck. The last person West wants to see up there is him. And, and there's a line shot in the center field. It's over the center field. His head. And that ball's going to roll to the fence. And the girl's going to come in to score. The Trailblazers are going to have a walk-off. Outstanding as Groves able to score. McClure able to drive one to center field over the center fielder's head. And the Trailblazers will walk off with a 5-4 victory here over Shawnee Mission West. Heck of a ball game today. As the Trailblazers able to fight back and take the victory from Shawnee Mission West. We'll be right back after this break to talk more about this. You're watching GEHS on MSTC Sports.
And welcome back here to Garden Edgerton High School, where the Trailblazers get a walk-off victory over Shiny Mission West, five to four. Great ball game today as we got good pitching, timely hitting by the by the Trailblazers, and very good pitching performance also by the by the pitcher from from West High School. As we look at Coach Shrek talking to his team in the outfield as they go to five and zero, oh, ranked number two here in the state of Kansas in six A. Our play of the game is going to be the bunt single, or the, the bunt single that allowed a throw to get in the scoring position from Turner as he lays down a bunt. As he's hustling down the line as the third baseman tries to come in and can't make the play, and he hustles down the line to get the runner over to second base and safe at first base, which made it run, runners in first and second with nobody out. And the player of the game will be Mr. McClure. Jake McClure with the three double to center field that was over the head of the center fielder. And here's the pitch. Jake gets a drive, turns on it. Ball gets up in that breeze a little bit, pushes it over, and the center fielder can't make the play as it rolls to the wall. And Gro is able to come all the way around from second base to score the winning run for the Trailblazers, five to four, as we see Jake pulling the second base celebrating. So, well, hard fought victory, hard ball game, good ball game. Mitch Mark pitched, pitched well for the first three innings, uh, first four innings, and was able to uh, uh, keep the Trailblazers ahead for a while. And then Zach Sanford comes in and settles the defense, settles the pitching down, and he walks away with the win after pitching three innings. So. <laughs> Okay, and so not expecting to be on camera, but hello everyone. It's been a great day here at Gardner Edison High School. So we really appreciate you joining us tonight and stay tuned for more action on GTE, GEHS TV Sports on Thursday night as the girls softball will uh, have a ball game. So join us then on Thursday night. For everyone on the production crew, everyone in the truck, Todd Henderson, executive producer, Mike Ramos, director. This is Chuck Holmes saying good night from Gardner Edison High School, where the Trailblazers walk off the 5-4 victory of the Shiny Mission West.